Hi everyone, it's Heidi from the Launchpad. I'm so glad you're here to watch our video. I'm coming to you from the future. <laughs> Yesterday when we recorded our video, we did have a little bit of a technical difficulty I wanted to tell you about. So when we're watching, or when you're watching, um, part of Miss Katie's story, just the very, very end, does get cut off for a little bit. So you might miss just a little of that story, uh, but most everything else is there. I also was talking when we were preparing our paper on our board, and you'll see this, what I mean in a little bit, but I was talking about how we can create some cool effects with um, if the tape doesn't go all the way around the edges. So if it goes all the way around the edges, you might have a really nice little frame here. But if your tape rips, like mine did when I was taping it down, that's okay because you can tape along different parts and your paint might bleed off the edge a little bit. But look at that, that still looks really cool. So whether or not you have a perfect square frame like this or whether or not it bleeds off the edge a little bit like this, it's actually both of those are perfectly fine and perfectly great for your art. There is no perfect. There's just the picture that you wanna make. So as long as the picture you wanna make turns out, then I think you should be very happy with yourself. And the great thing is, if you wanna improve and get better, you just keep practicing. So you get more paper, you have your pastels, you have your uh, paints, and you keep on working. So here's a little sneak peek of what you'll be making. And now I'm going to turn it over to past Heidi from the launch pad and let her and Miss Katie take it from here. Have fun and enjoy. All right. Okay, so to get started, I'm so glad to see everyone. Well, but we have two sides of our paper. We have a nice smooth side. And then we have a side that's a little bit rougher, has a little more texture. And that's the side, that's the right side. We want that side to be up. So if you have that side up, you're going to put it on your board and then you're going to take your washi tape. I got some fun washi tape here. Can you see that? It's little witches. And we're going to take our washi tape and carefully, oh, sometimes that happens. Mine ripped a little bit. But we're going to tape our paper down. To our board. So the board will help protect your table and taping it down, taping the paper down to it will help so that your paper doesn't move around and slip while we're working. And usually if you can, I like to cover from one end all the way to the other but my tape is ripping on me, so I'm not gonna be able to do that as easily. But if you can go from one side all the way to the other on all four sides, because then that makes a nice white little, or a nice little frame around, depending on what color paper you use. So it gives you some nice clean edges. but it's also okay if it's not that way because then you might have some cool little splashes of color that go off on the edge and that can be a really neat part of your art too. All right, so while we tape this down and I'm gonna have grownups, if you can help tape down paper on this side and then look, I'm gonna show you a magic trick real quick. <gasps> There's paper on my other side already. So if we have time, we're gonna do two pieces of art. So grownups, if you can help tape down um, the paper on both sides, that would be great. And then Miss Katie, do you think you're ready for stories and songs? I think so. Okay. So while our grownups are helping get ready for that, I'm going to replace my pin and we're going to go to Miss Katie. 
All right, well, good morning, everybody. So I'm really excited today because fall is one of, well, it really is my favorite season. We've only got four choices, right? And fall is one that I love the best. Um, so I'm always excited when the leaves start to change color and the weather gets a little bit cooler. Um, that means that we get to bring out our fall stories and our fall songs. So today we're gonna get started with a song called Leaves Are Falling. And this is gonna help us warm up our hands and our fingers. So the tune for this one is Jingle Bells. And we're gonna start out moving our fingers up and down. So that's gonna be our leaves falling through the air. And then we're gonna see where those leaves are going to land. So we'll start moving our hands and our fingers. And we'll sing, leaves are falling, leaves are falling, falling on my head. Leaves are falling, leaves are falling, falling on my nose, on my ears, on my neck, even my elbows. Leaves are falling, leaves are falling when the cold wind blows. And at the end, we get to do a big whoosh for that cold wind blowing. And of course, that's the best part, right? So let's try it one more time. We're gonna go just a teeny bit faster. So we got our hands and our fingers ready. And we'll sing, leaves are falling, leaves are falling, falling on my head. Leaves are falling, leaves are falling, falling on my nose, on my neck, on my ears, even my elbows. Leaves are falling, leaves are falling when the brisk wind blows. Whoosh! <laughs> Great stop. And songs like that are a lot of fun because once you know the basic words to it, you can keep going and you can add in any other body parts that you can think of and you can get super specific too. You can sing about your ankles, your earlobes, whatever else you can think of. All right, so we're gonna try one more rhyme before we get to our story today. So you probably have heard two little blackbirds, right? But today we're gonna to do two little pumpkins in honor of our art project. So for this one, we're gonna need two fingers, one from each hand, and these are gonna be our two little pumpkins, right? So let's hide them behind our back to get started. And then we're gonna bring them out and we're gonna say, two little pumpkins sitting on a hill, one named Jack and one named Joe. All right, now pumpkins are round. So our pumpkins are going to roll away, Jack. Roll away, Jill. Come back, Jack. And come back, Jill. All right, do you think we could try it all together? Okay, here we go. Let's hide our hands behind our back and then we'll bring them out. Two little pumpkins sitting on a hill, one named Jack and one named Jill. Roll away, Jack, and roll away, Jill. Come back, Jack, and come back, Jill. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, now I'm gonna kind of scooch a little bit here. Let's see, all good? All right, so today we are gonna share the story, Fall Pumpkin Fun. So this is gonna tell us a little bit more about pumpkins and how they grow. All right, so what do you think? Does it look like a fall scene? No, this is spring. What? So we're going to be planting a pumpkin patch. It's spring, but I'm thinking about fall. Let's grow pumpkins in the garden. We make little hills in the soil and plant two or three seeds in each hill. All right, so they're going to start out their pumpkins, teeny tiny little seeds. But what do you think they're going to need to grow? Then we water the seeds. 
Later, the seeds crack open and tiny roots grow down. Two weeks pass and look, I see tiny plants. So that seed has started to sprout. We've got some leaves growing. It looks very promising, right? Little leaves grow from thin vines. The vines spread out. All right, so we have plants, but no pumpkins yet. So let's see how those are gonna grow. Now it is summer. Look, I see yellow flowers on the vines. Bzz, bees spread pollen from one flower to another. All right, so you can see those bees are busy working in the garden, but wait a sec, where are the pumpkins? There we go, little green pumpkins begin to grow. I water the plants every week. They grow bigger all summer. So you can see they started out pretty teeny tiny, but look how big they've grown. Leaves take in warm sunlight. Sunlight becomes food for the growing pumpkin plant. Finally, it is fall. Cool air and short days tell the pumpkins to stop growing. Their skin turns orange. They are ready to pick. Oh my goodness. Look at all of those awesome pumpkins. All right. So what are some of the different things we can do with pumpkins? We can make pumpkin pie. So they're going to wash the pumpkin. They're going to open it up and bake the pieces and then mix that up to make a pie. Smells delicious. Yum. Oh, now they're gonna scoop out the seeds and cut two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. It'd be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? All right, so we are at the end. There were so many different things to do with pumpkins. So some people made pie. Does anybody like to make or eat pie? It's a good thing to do in fall. Uh, does anybody like to carve their pumpkin and put a face on it? Yeah. Do you make happy faces or scary faces? What's your favorite? Happy. If you like to do happy ones, give me a thumbs up. If you like the scary pumpkins, give me two thumbs up. No, that's okay. <laughs> we all get to do what we like. And sometimes some people like to paint things on their pumpkins, right? There's all kinds of fun stuff. Today, instead of painting on a pumpkin, we are going to paint a pumpkin. So Miss Katie, thank you so much for that. Let me do my magic and we'll remove pins so that we can work on our pumpkin art together. So pumpkins are, I'm gonna start, you should have, actually before we start, you should now have your paper already on your board. You should have a set of watercolors, a set of oil pastels. If you didn't have, don't have oil pastels because you weren't able to get a kit, then you can also use crayons. And then you should have some water. I have two cups, one for um, clean water for when I just need to dip my brush to get it wet. And the other is for when I'm cleaning my brush. And then your set of paints probably came with a brush. And then if you got a kit, you might want the larger brush too. So those are going to be our tools for today. So we are going to start with our oil pastel. And something really funny happens because we're using watercolors and we're using oil pastels. 
And when you mix, you can do a science experiment with this. If you take a little bit of water at home and a little bit of oil and mix them together or try to mix them together, they just separate. So we're gonna use that to help make our cool art. So I'm gonna grab an orange pastel. Oh, no, I've changed my mind. I'm gonna grab a black pastel to draw my pumpkin. So pumpkins are, they can be a circle or they can kind of be an oval. So you decide what shape you want your pumpkin to be. I'm gonna go with a bumpy oval. So I'm gonna do, it's gonna have a, some bumps on the top. And then it's going to be an oval shape. So here's my pumpkin. And you'll see in a little bit why, why I'm making it black. Because most pumpkins, we'd usually do orange. There's a special reason, reason I'm doing it black. And then I want to do a face on my pumpkin. So you get to decide what kind of face do you want your pumpkin to have? So you could do a smiling face, a scary face. I'm going to give mine one big eye and just color it in. And then I want him to look like he's winking at everybody. So I'm gonna do a V that goes, or not a V, it's like more like a mountain, like an upside down V. And I'm gonna make it a little thick so it's like a winking eye. And then I need to give him a mouth or her, I don't know yet. And I'm gonna give it a nice big toothy smile. So there's a tooth, there's a tooth. And then to make sure it looks like a smile, I'm gonna do that and color that in. Okay, so there is my pumpkin. And what, does anybody know what goes at the top of a pumpkin? It kind of grows out of it. It's where it attaches to the plant. If you said stem, you're right. This is the pumpkin stem. So I'm gonna use a green color and do my pumpkin stem in the green. And I'm gonna use this light green because we're gonna play around with their colors a little bit. And I'm just gonna give him some lines there on his stem, but I'm not gonna color it all the way in. Okay, what's something else I want in my picture? I think I'm gonna do some, like our pumpkins in our rhyme was sitting on a hill. So I'm gonna have my pumpkin sitting on a green hill. And I'm gonna just draw a little bit of like, kind of like grass. You might want some bigger areas of color, some little areas. Make it look however you want. If you've done a grown up Emmy with me before, then you know I am a big fan of making your art your own. There are no mistakes here. And we're gonna add some color to this in a little bit. Okay. So, so far I have my pumpkin with his stem and my pumpkin sitting on the hill. And I'm gonna take my white. So this is gonna be a cool magic trick to see in a little bit. So if you take your white pastel, so my pumpkin, I think it's gonna be nighttime when we paint it. So I'm going to do a white circle up here in the corner and fill it in. And you might have to look really close. I'm gonna look it up and look close 
to see where that is. Because it's hard to see the white. You're going, Miss Heidi, why am I putting white on my white paper? I can't see it very well. And you'll see in a little bit. You can brush it away. And I'm also going to do little curly cues in white in the sky. You could also do clouds with your white, but you'll see soon. This is my favorite, one of my favorite magic tricks in art. I'm just doing all these little curlies. Okay. All right. So if you are done drawing your pumpkin and you have some background and your curly cues, can you show me what you have so far? <gasps> Whoa! These are great pumpkins. I love them so much. It's got a nice circle pumpkin and a good oval pumpkin. Ooh. <sighs> I like the, the nose on Arturo, on that pumpkin. Ooh, and look at that small, the mouth on your pumpkin. Very good. All right. Now we're going to start with our paint. So since these are watercolors, they need water to work. So I'm going to take and dip in some clear water and the color I want to start with is orange. So I'm going to put some drops of orange to activate my watercolor and make it work. And make sure I made a mistake. I should have dipped my big brush in some water first. Okay. So I'm going to get a bunch of orange paint on there and I'm going to start by coloring my pumpkin. And here's the best part. You know how sometimes we always have, we have to color in the lines. You don't have to stay in the lines. If you go outside the lines a little bit, that is totally okay. So we're going to start by painting our pumpkin. And if you look, when you go across the parts where you colored, with your uh, pastels, it kind of doesn't stay right there. It kind of fills in the spaces, but it doesn't paint over the black. And that's because if you need to, you can get some more water on your brush. That's because the water in the paint is being repelled, it's being pushed away by the oils in the pastel. So I'm gonna go just a little bit outside my lines. Cause I like how that looks. I like how it kind of blends into the, to the background a little bit. But yeah, if you look closely, you can see that the water, when I go like this across my oil pastel, if you're watching closely on your picture, when you go across oil pastel, the water kind of goes whoosh, and it goes away from the oils. Okay. I'm gonna clean my brush. And then dip it in my clear, clean water. And then I'm gonna go to the green, the darker green. And I'm gonna paint my, my grass. And it's okay if you let your colors blend a little bit. It's actually really neat. If your orange went outside, of your pumpkin a little bit where it's blending with the green, it kind of makes it into a slightly different color of green. 
So you get kind of what looks like a little bit of a shadow underneath your pumpkin. And that gives our pumpkin and our grass a little bit of dimension to our picture. So it makes it look like it pops a little. But you can make your grass whatever your whatever color you want. If you think maybe because sometimes in the fall the grass outside starts to get a little bit browner, you could do brown, or you could do maybe mix some colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my small paintbrush and get my yellow color and mix it up here. So you can use this area up here, your lid as a place to mix colors. So I'm gonna get a bunch of yellow and put there. And I'm gonna rinse that off. I want to make a different, a slightly different color than what I have. And with my clean paintbrush, I'm going to go into the green color and mix that with the yellow. So I get an, a little brighter yellow green color. Brand new color we made. And that's the color I'm going to use on my stem or my pumpkin. Okay. And I think I'm gonna clean that off. I want more yellow. So I'm gonna go directly into the yellow right here. And I'll add some more yellow to my stem. It's not showing up as much as I hoped, but it's not bad. I think it looks pretty good. Okay. Are you ready to start on our sky yet? Give everybody some time. So I want my sky to be dark because it's night out in my pumpkin area where my pumpkin is. So I've got my big brush and I'm gonna do, let's see, I'm gonna go for black. So I'm gonna get some black paint on my brush. And then this is where the magic's going to happen. Because I'm going to take my black paint and go sweep it across my sky. <gasps> and all of those swirls and my big round circle, that's my moon. They're appearing like magic. Look at that, I've got some cool squirrels. Kind of like there's fog in the air almost. And you can mix some color, other colors in if you want. Because the sky isn't, the sky at night can be a lot of different colors. So I'm gonna clean my brush a little. And I think what I want to do is I'm gonna put a little bit of purple in my sky. Let's see what happens. May mix in some purple. And keep the purple kind of on the edges, I think. And it's not just a black sky, it's kind of a gray looking sky. A little spooky, maybe. Do you see how those? Did you guys reveal some secret images in your paintings? 
if you want to, feel free to hold them up so I can see and you can share with me. Ah, oh, wow, look at those pumpkins. Very nice. Okay, if you think you are done with your pumpkin, we get to do something fun now because we're gonna peel off your pumpkin and lay it to the side so it can dry. And then if you got your board prepped on the back side, and grownups, you wanna make, if you need to, you can make sure everything's clean so that when you flip it over, you're ready for a new picture. And you get to draw whatever picture you want this time. But we're gonna do the same thing where we use our uh, oil pastels and then your paints, you can paint over them with whatever color you want. I will say that the darker paint over the top of the lighter paint shows, or over the top of lighter colors shows up really nice. So let's see. I think to keep with their spooky season, I mean, or not spooky season necessarily, but our fall season, I'm gonna do a tree this time, but you can do whatever you want. So the colors I'm getting, yeah, we've been plenty of time. The colors I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get brown for my tree and some yellow and orange and red for my leaves. And then some white, because I like you, like I said, I like using that white because I like to have some kind of mystery in my picture. And I think instead of doing a tree, I'm just gonna do some different leaves. So I think with my brown, our leaves can come in all kinds of different shapes. So some leaves are kind of like a teardrop or a raindrop shape. I'm gonna make a a raindrop shaped leaf. I'm excited to see what everybody else is gonna draw. Because it doesn't have to be the same as me, remember. And I'm gonna put a stem on mine. And then I think I'm gonna draw a round leaf. Oops. It's kind of like a heart almost, like an upside down heart. These are just, I'll imagine these are leaves that are falling to the ground or blowing in the wind. If they're blowing in the wind, I need to draw some wind there for them, blowing them away. And maybe a yellow leaf, kind of like a maple leaf. Maple leaves have, I don't remember now, I think they have three kind of like separate parts of them. So this will be my version of a maple leaf. This is from Heidi's imagination, this leaf. I'll draw some wind swirling that one around. And then I think up here in the corner, 
I'm going to draw because it's during the day for my picture. I'm going to give myself the sun. And these leaves are all floating in the air, being blown around by the wind, but it's kind of like a day like today where there's not a lot of clouds in the sky and the sun or the sky is nice and blue. So then I think I'm ready to paint. I'm gonna clean off my big brush, dip it in some clean water and then dip it into my blue paint. And since my leaves are just blowing through the air, I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna paint all of this, or I'm gonna paint all of this blue and see what gets revealed. A little bit more water. Back and forth. Okay, there's my fall leaves being blown around in the wind. You can even make your, your paint kind of swirl. You don't just have to go back and forth or up and down. You can make your paint swirl too. And that kind of shows up that. All right. So there is my piece of art. So you can do all kinds of things with these colors if you want when you're using your uh, oil pastels and your watercolors because like we said they uh the oil in the pastels it it doesn't like to mix with the water so they make each other they repel each other and they make each other separate so your oil or your watercolors are never going to completely cover your oil pastels that you drew with Ooh, i see some friends who are hard at work well, I hope you had a good time painting with Miss Katie and I, and I hope to see you soon. Don't forget to share your paintings with us. Bye.